get the limited edition signed poster by donating $100. Your donations will support the hardworking team who made the UBC a reality. Thank you so much. How good is your backgammon? Prove yourself by downloading the new Backgammon Galaxy app for free. Play against players from all over the world, get a Galaxy rating, and see how you rank among the stars. See you in the Backgammon Galaxy app. Subscribe to the Galaxy newsletter and get tournament info, product news, special discounts, community updates, free content, and much more. Book your room for the Backgammon World Championship and Monte Carlo Open. Limited rooms available and only 500 room nights, so hurry up and book now. Join the UBC 2023 Contender Tournament and the Estafter Tournament. Nick Blazier here. Buy my book. It's available on Amazon now. An intuitive approach to match study. You skip the numbers and the calculations and develop your score feel. Coming soon. Backgammon Masterclass by Super Grandmaster Masayuki Mochisuki and Grandmaster Mark Olson. Subscribe to the Galaxy Newsletter to get information about the book launch. Visit the Galaxy Shop for luxury backgammon boards and accessories. Designed by players, for players. New board, primal, limited edition, only 10 boards made. Order now. Improve your backgammon skills by reading the best books on the market. Available on Amazon. Links in the description below. What's up, backgammon fans? We're back for match number two of the UBC final 2022 Mochi versus Sander. And yesterday we saw a very complicated and interesting match where Sander took the lead 2-0. He won the match and the PR point which is the rule format of uh, the UBC final. So, Nick, what do you think about the match yesterday? Yeah, it was everything I could have asked for. Huge swings in the PR, in the game, all this. We got to see the style clash with Mochi taking advantage of some extra decisions along the way, you know, all these kinds of things. Um, and it looks like well matched up like we expected, you know. So, really great start for Sander to be 2-0. Um, but a long way to go to winning this. So, so I mean, Mochi definitely in this still, right? <laughs> definitely. It's a long way yeah. to go. Uh, Sander, of course, is off to a dream start, being up 2-0 and uh, playing a better PR uh, against Mochi. But I think we're going to see Mochi uh, catch up. You know, he, he sometimes, we've seen it before in some of the the other UBC finals with Mochi. Sometimes he starts a little bit slow, but then as soon yeah. as he gets gets the ball rolling, you know, then he's just a force of nature. So I think that's probably what we're going to see again yeah. in, in this one. So, this was like your main storyline for a long time was the game one syndrome and can Mochi overcome it? And he did against Dirk, right? But uh, I don't know, maybe an old ghost coming back to haunt him here. <laughs> yes. Okay, Nick, let's get to it. Uh, match number two coming right up. All right. All right, we're back at the board here, getting ready for match two. After a short break, I'm sure. Players looking relaxed, getting the clock set up on that nice Monte Carlo board. Yeah, we're using the, the Tempest clock. And Mochi just reset the, the clock on the Tempest app. If you want to follow Tempest on Instagram, I suggest you do, do so. It's a quite cool Instagram yeah. uh, they, they have there. Tom from Tempest. They're yeah. doing chess and all kinds of other games as well. Now, I can't tell from the setup of the recording if the players have had adequate time to actually review the match, too. If they know kind of where their mistakes were, if they're coming in with like a fresh start, or if they're just going to bring the same game they had last game, you know? Do you, do you happen to know? I don't know, actually. I mean, there yeah. is a live transcriber uh, sitting yeah. next to the board, so I would be surprised if they didn't go over and, and review some of their blunders. Right. It, it yeah. Was, it, was a fun match. <laughs> <laughs> it was a fun match. Yeah, and, it's a fun uh, match for Sander because he won two points. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Mochi didn't say much. Sander said it was a fun match. Ooh, six I four. I wonder if Sander knows this. You know, you're supposed to make the two point. Yeah, this is the standard money play. They're very small, but. I've seen his opening is a little bit uh, stylistic and not like super technical. Yeah, it's completely stylistic. The 6-4 mm -hmm. opening, 7 away, 7 away. Yeah. And it leads to this game. <laughs> there was something we missed yesterday, Nick. Uh, I was told here after the first match that uh, Sander actually uh, mentioned uh, to Mochi to slot with that 5-2 where Mochi made a big blunder yesterday. So it wow. seemed that Sander planted that idea in Mochi's mind. <laughs> <laughs> Can't be getting tricked by that. 
You got to know better than to listen to an opponent like Sander. I like Mochi, <laughs> just reaches for the right spares, makes the five point, not worried about the race yet, and wants Beautiful to make play. the better distribution instead, yeah. Yes. And prevents these fours from being as powerful as they could be. Yes, and now we have the game developing. Sander mm -hmm. is getting into a prime for, oh, sorry, a blitz formation here with a lot of yeah. front-loaded checkers and a race lead and deep points made. Mochi has a classical priming formation with back-loaded yeah. checkers and oh. good timing. This is like a book problem. Come on. Wow. We can hit in the outfield. We can make the bar. We can make the four. Like, what yeah. don't we want to do? We wow. can make an anchor. <laughs> but look at the best play. It's a blowout play. Huh? You, you just got to yeah, make the four it... and, and step up to the 22. It does two things. It does two things. As we often things. see thing. Yeah, it's like the one. The other play I can see, I guess if we played to the seven and split, that's kind of two things. But then we open up to so Sanders' blitz ideal blitz attack. Yeah, That's right. So yeah, this is such a nice play, Mochi. Good play. Good find, Mochi. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's a challenging one. It's you hate not efficient. closing the bar point and like progressing on your priming plan, like you talked about there. You know. Yeah, but it's the it's the right play to do when you're playing a yeah. priming battle. You want to maximize efficiency, like the the degree to mm -hmm. which you utilize your checkers, and this is just perfect checker utilization. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, that's that's a hitting play as well. I didn't even of consider course, that at first. yeah, yeah. That's one of the first ones <laughs> that jumped out. It's like, well, this can't be too bad. But we're outboarded after this. It feels yeah. again like too many, too many shots from the board from the bar. Yeah, yeah. it Mochi just doesn't work out enough. Mochi wants to play a priming battle here, so there's no yeah. need to hit. Yeah, this is playing into Sanders' game plan. And that now that he actually shows it too, that twenty-two point anchor actually looks very strong in this position. It negates it's... one of Sanders' points. It has plenty of mobility for when the prime works later. Yeah, and if we get so hit, strong. it's going to do a lot of work. Yeah, so, so I think this looks fairly like... clear when we have time. Yeah, you gotta just make the the efficient play emoji. Yeah, and that anchor is just so good over on the 22 point it negates all of the blitz value yes this is good play mochi beautiful yeah. play very nice it's almost like he has a double next time unless sander rolls something good i think he has a double here i didn't hear what sander said about the play but he had feedback okay. i think just cleaning up and avoiding double or direct shots makes a lot of sense here sure and this is a but, double for mochi this is a big double yeah. actually just by, by threat of priming the priming game plan is special also it must something. be like a trivial take, though, just because he might not cover the bar, right? And we can still try to run. <sighs> we have a four-point board. I, I've, yeah. Oh, it's actually pretty close. Okay, okay. Close. okay He's so good. out of timing that it's it's getting to be a risk. Okay. Yeah, it's, okay. It, this is a timing double. You know, it's um, yeah. When you when you're in the middle game and the game evolves into a priming battle as it is here, you don't need two out of three points like in terms of priming, blitzing and racing. You, you, you just need uh, to win the priming battle. And that, if you're strong enough in the priming battle game plan, that's enough to double. You might have even lost your market already because the priming game plan is special. It's mm -hmm. the most powerful of all the game plans. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's putting Sandra on the spot here. Yeah. I didn't hear what they were saying over the board there either, and he's going to take it. Okay. Good take by Sandra. It seems a little bit too early to, to give up. Oh, wow. Oof. Destroyer. That's a big one. And I think mobility is really important now, so we got to get that anchor moving. And why leave shots with the last one? Fine. It feels yeah, like you're taking some pressure off that blot on the 10 point, though, so I think maybe that's his hesitation here. Ah, but you got to come out. I mean, what else yeah. could you possibly play? This Eight to move. two with two or something, yeah. Eight to two, it, it makes a gap in on the three point. Yeah. yeah. I like that he's slowing down though and trying to make sure he doesn't like he made some unnecessary mistakes last time, right? Like yeah. things that he usually gets right. And so I think he realizes he needs to be in a different headspace to to really win this match, you know? Yeah. Oh, this is interesting. How do you play this? Because normally mm. we just clear the sixteen point, but that might not be the Yeah, look, it's better to take two down. Maximizing wow. pressure and contact. Yeah, so our opponent must have some bad follow-up rolls, but I feel like we can have some bad rolls of our own when we don't this to do this too. So I would have a very hard time finding that one. Yeah, it's a natural play that Mochi made, but uh, yeah. as we see, mm -hmm. it would actually have been slightly better to bring two down and keep the pressure, keep the contact. Yeah. Little yep. crunch. Six two is just going to find distribution for making the next point in board. However, we can do that best. Yeah. Uh, I would have thought. I would have thought 11 to 5 and maybe like uh, 10 to 8 is nice so we can keep the 8 point. But, but okay. uh, then you lose a builder for the 9 point. It's kind of ah, nice to be able to make the point. 9 point as well. 
we're still thinking about extending from the rear as well. Okay. Yeah. 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 It duplicates that quite a bit though. Four two. Four two is duplicated. That's true. Yeah. But you get four one and two one and double one. Uh -huh. Six five slightly six. awkward. Yeah. Well, we can get eleven to six. Looks pretty nice. And then oh, yeah, that's yeah we can play into the four as well. This looks it's beautiful. It's not awkward. Yeah. It looks beautiful. <laughs> Sorry, <Yeah>. my bad. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little front loaded, right? The next six yeah. five is uncomfortable. It's a little front loaded. That's true. We prefer yeah. to have back loaded spare checker distributions. So I think we still just roll forward here, volunteer the A6, because we can't afford to get stacked up and leave like a direct shot next roll. No, it's such a small and risk to take to get your shakers utilized. We're probably not even losing after being hit with an A6. No, <laughs> right, so, yeah. probably still favorites. Yeah. And which is just going to let Sandra crunch here. All right, this is the, the warm-up match they were hoping for. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yesterday's roll. Yeah. Both playing below a yeah. point one so far. Now, just getting closer to home is pretty natural, of course, but there's a lot of tactics in making sure all our sets play correctly. So he's going to take a little time to sort that out. We probably don't want to create additional contact by clearing the bar point now. I don't think we're. Uh, I think it's almost nice to keep the bar point a little longer and let our opponent crack more. Let him crack a little bit more. I think so too. Yeah. Also because you want your checkers in on the inside before you you open up the bar in case he rolls yeah. a double six. So yeah. so Mochi is trying to get as many pips played as as possible before he opens up the prime. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, he's able to come in safely. This is interesting. I actually clearing the six looks like way better distribution. It would have been fun to think about. But I think a few too many shots. Yeah. Yeah, and you you need to get your checkers on the inside so you can start bearing them off. I've never seen this crown bear off position before. <laughs> Are we hitting here? I don't think so. I think the distribution six to three and two off looks a little too nice. I think, I think we are actually, Nick, go. because what happens if we don't hit hit and Sander rolls a six? He yeah, he's got up. some race, but he's still got a four point board if we get hit with an ace, too. So I think there's losses in both directions. Um, maybe you're right, though, because we can still enter high. <laughs> I Could be too important to save the race, yeah. Oh, they're so close. I think Interesting. that, yeah, I would have hit. It yeah. is the best play, but it's rather close. It's more for gammons, actually, with this. I didn't think about that. Ah, There's still eight pips outside gammons. to fight for. And so if we stop him, um, we can still pick some up. Yes. And, and when we don't, he's going to save all those gammon saving pips next roll almost every time. Yeah. Very interesting. That's a tough one to sort through, but again, I'm glad to see Mochi like slowing down and figuring this out. Yeah. Obviously, it's tough to know what play is better here over the board. So mm -hmm. he's just trying to do a little bit of calculations and use some pattern recognition. Yeah. What feels better here? But now that we've talked through it, I feel like everywhere that you would make an error in evaluating this, unless you overlook the idea that there might be gammons, like most things feel like they kind of point to hitting because you might still worry about losing the game if you don't. Yeah. You know? So. I mean, I, yeah. I, it's actually, look at the gammon rates. It's 10.8% if you hit, and it's 1.5% yeah. if you don't hit. That's tremendous gammon difference. Good yes. play, Mochi. Very good play. Well found, and he gets hit, but uh -huh. not huge punishment yet. Uh -huh. A few more gammons in this iteration, actually, because he can pick up the other checker. Ooh, this is beautiful shot from the roof. Now we're hitting for sure. Yes. And the gammons are up to 20% almost here. Mm -hmm. And, ooh, the ace in is huge for Sander. On a fan, he was going to be in big trouble. But Mochi can definitely lose the race here. Now. Oh, wow, that's a big swing. Mochi dead. I think Sander needs to lose his oh. market by running with the six first before he's going to have any real cube decision. I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With such a weak board. He needs to roll a six before he can redouble, of course. Wow, this dance. is interesting, yeah. though, because this Sander looks bad. Six. Oh, <laughs> double <Yeah>. sixes. <laughs> wow. 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 And this is just a trivial claim now, but we're going to see, see, look at this. Mochi would have played on for the PR, yeah, and, yes. and Sander is going to miss this opportunity. That's right. That's yeah. right. I don't know. That I think it still would have counted because Mochi had some winning chances, but misses out on some decisions, yeah. Yeah, Mochi had uh, one in a thousand, I think. Yeah. Maybe Mochi's the one that actually has decisions there, too, though. 
if you want to think about it that way. So maybe he is right to claim uh, that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but for sure, Sander doesn't think this way, you know? Right. How good is your backgammon? Prove yourself by downloading the new Backgammon Galaxy app for free. Play against players from all over the world, get a Galaxy rating, and see how you rank among the stars. See you in the Backgammon Galaxy app. Mm. Is that your f rating at 1538 there? Uh, no. <laughs> I think it's Wilson's. I'm already above 2000 in the US. <laughs> <laughs> it's supposed to slot and match play already. Okay, interesting, even with the lead in the score. But Sander fighting his own way. It's nice to show that you can still play at like super top level and kind of choose your own adventure on the opening still. Like it's not so crucial to memorize it. The reason yeah. we memorize it is because you can. <laughs> you know? <laughs> it's like a, yeah. a digestible chunk to go for. Yeah. I think it was Mochi who said this once that if you can just memorize it, then you don't have to think about it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but just... it helps to think about. I, I've been with my students. Like I, if you think about why and what the merits are of all of them, it helps you so much more later in the game, right? And if you try to I just agree. apply what you memorized on the second roll, then you're just lost on the third roll already because it's that much different, you know? Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. This is a tricky one here. Yeah, okay, we're not going to be much ahead in the race. So do we want to run and risk what even race we have or just play down and get another checker in the zone? Uh after Common six, theme, but I miss these a lot. Yeah. Yeah. After you're open with six one and make the bar point, then the next six typically goes from seven, uh, thirteen to seven. Yeah. But it's a slightly awkward to play twenty four twenty here, uh, because yeah. you get that awkward back checker constellation. Mm -hmm. But uh, it was the best play and a good find by Sander. Yeah, the ace is hitting for sure, and sure, let's just bring builders into the zone. If he gets away with this, he's going to have a commanding lead in the position, a four four Ooh. fan for sure. This can't be too good this early, I don't think. It can never be too good. It can never yeah. be too good. I have but it a can't rule. not be a cube. <laughs> I, I, call it, I call it Mark's rule. Early cubes yeah. are always takes. However, yeah. this is not it's an not early cube. not too far. And he was like thinking about the right thing. I mean, this is pretty crushed with a 7 away, 5 away score lead. Of course, like it's the least desirable kind of cube to take here too, right? But That's right. You already 10 adjusted. in the zone, racing lead, all these things. Oh, he yeah. takes it? He takes it? No, he oh, passed. He, he passed. passed. Yeah. Oh, good pass by Sandra, yeah. because my point was that this might look like an early cube, but it isn't, because yeah. Mochi has 10 men in the zone. Right, right. And he's threatening right. to make the rack here, so this is not an yeah. early cube. This is a middle game yeah. cube. Mm -hmm. and has to Book your room for the Backgammon World Championship and Monte Carlo Open. Limited rooms available and only 500 room nights, so hurry up and book now. Yeah, so that was a good drop by Sander. He found the pass. Yeah. Very good play. Yeah. Good play from both sides. Yeah. Those, I think the easiest way I can find them is just when they're like completely one sided. I didn't look close at the numbers either, but it might have been a money pass even. Um, I think it was a small money pass. Yeah. And, and, a, mm -hmm. and a quite significant pass at the score. Sander right. leading 2 0. Oh, and this so. tempo hit is not essential. I would have gone for this too. Yeah. I remember the, the run though. It's fine. Yeah. Is that the best play? The tempo hit? Uh, I can't remember. It's I think running is actually slightly better, but it's not bad. They're all close. Yeah. But it's surprising to see Mochi choose something other yeah, than like the best his... thing that he memorized. Yeah. <laughs> so, I'm not tempo hitting after the five one split. Uh four one split. Oh, sorry, four one split. Yeah. Okay, get the it best could anchor. Be because the the, the, yeah. the builder on the nine point is very active. Yeah. And you remove. I that, don't see uh, a better ace than just slotting here, and I'm surprised <laughs> to see that twenty four to twenty three is an option. Of course, we're running out of checkers in the zone, but. I'm ready yeah. to play Pierre this far down here. Yes, you know? it's because of the split back checkers of Sander, so it's a double mm -hmm, shot. It's mm -hmm, a little mm -hmm. bit too much. Yeah. But I like your idea, Nick. I, I probably would have slotted as well. Yeah. He's playing pure. And no chance we're going to hit again on the ace. We're just no. going to bring a checker into the zone and Definitely. To the limit ammunition. Sander's mobility. Yes. you got to play pure with this little ammunition. Yeah. And both players playing really sharp in this match. I mean, we're seeing some A-game stuff now. Yeah. It's beautiful to see. Okay, Once what about again? This? I think Mochi yeah. has to play pure here. I don't think yes. he can hit on the ace. With four checkers back and only seven in the zone right now, there's no way we can afford to make the ace point. I'm surprised yeah. how close that is. The three yeah. point seems okay, but we've got to do something. Just being in the outfield 20 to 15 looks pretty nice too. But uh, I guess, you don't want You don't yeah. want to give up the 20-point anger. That you got to keep the 20-point anger. This is yeah. The I yeah. think the reason why making the ace point is not that far behind 
Oh, there's a slotting play. That's pure play. But then making yeah. the threes got to be better because of Sanders' blots in the position. But I think the reason why the hitting on the ace is not that far behind is because of the blot on the bar point. It breaks mm -hmm. connection between the two back checkers. And yeah. very often you get to hit that second checker afterwards. But good it's play so, by Mochi. It's so permanent, you know? Like, it's just going to be there. Wow, this is yeah. a tough one. I think instantly we see we can make the anchor, but then we have those stacks to deal with in the long term. Yeah. Like, and we're not really worried about being attacked when our opponent has four checkers back in such a weak position. So he misses a small opportunity there to improve his board. Yeah, it, I think it was basically a tie between the two. Yeah, yeah. I would have probably chosen Sanders play too. Yeah, I don't think I would have thought too hard about making the four, but I see why. Yeah. There's still checkers Six. back there to pressure, and we have to bring this home somehow. And yes. it's really... I mean, the big question here is how long does Sander want to keep the 18 point here? Like, if he gets, like, a chance to next roll, he might want to run off it already. Uh, the so. problem is he's outboarded, so when you're doing mm -hmm. these runoff plays, these pay-now style moves, yeah. you... Usually, he's not outboarded if he makes the four. That, that's true. He, he would <laughs> yeah. have to make an inboard point first, I think, so he's not outboarded. Yeah. Which he could have done. Yeah, <laughs> but then he wouldn't yeah. have had the 18 point. Right, right. <laughs> That's a reroll. We we do play with dice on checker, but not dice on bar. Mm -hmm. And this is shaping up to be a pretty standard mutual holding game. Mochi with a little bit extra contact, but not a lot of board strength or like lead to really capitalize on that yet. Needs to improve his board quite a bit. This one, for instance, Nick, that was a chance to run off the anchor, but it's a big mistake to do so. You you have yeah. to sit tight. Well, that one leaves the double shot with a 5 ace too. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah. It's, it would have been better with 5 4, 5 3, 5 2. This is not what mm. Mochi had in mind. It that's really doesn't improve point. anything. Yeah. I think you've got to do this. He's catching up in the race at least. Yeah, don't we want to stay linked to the back checker the best we can oh. somehow? Okay, sure, we sure. We need the contact also from the midpoint. Yeah. There's no other play. That's a hard find. And Sander with a slightly better board now, too. Okay. Yeah. Mochi under pressure with that single checker back. Huh. But a little One. bit of improvement here. I guess we just go to the deuce. I guess so. I guess so. You don't want to break the mid right? No, the race is too close and you have the back checker needs to get home. You could also play 8 to 4, which is a little bit ugly. It seems to be the yeah. preferred play by the computer. That seems fine, too. Eight sure. To 4 here. You, we prefer not to front load our spare checkers and move it past mm -hmm. the point we want to make, but we don't yeah. have much choice here. Yeah. So I suppose we'd rather have the spare on the six to... Uh, this is an interesting option uh, here, too. Yeah, it's the It most releases flexible. sixes, though. Yeah. It is the most flexible play. I just think it comes with too big of a cost. You're giving up valuable contact. You're blocking yeah. your Sanders 18 point, and you're yeah. giving up a valuable landing space for your rear checker. Yeah, yeah. You unlink is a big problem. This one is very interesting, too. Wow. It's not even clear that we want to move that back checker. It gains some in the race and creates a blitzing plan, but right now the checker is primed. Is that really yeah. what we want to go after? So it's very close. It's yeah. very interesting. I mean, yeah. I, would be, I would just put that guy on the bar, pick and pass. But yeah, you, you make a good point, Nick. You, we are already priming the checker, so why would we go ahead and hit it? You know, We already have him where we want him. Yeah common theme in the early game there that we don't want to like fix that location he's going to find that and focus on making wow, the point instead. it's a really good play here if he finds this play when we look at it too i mean i guess it's kind of clear for the follow-up after you hit and make the point it's not clear how you're getting to a win from here Sander always makes this play yeah he makes yeah. the hitting, hitting play. the other one we are so likely to make the five point and a five prime and i don't yeah. think our opponent can play the the game if we get away with that yeah. you know Exactly. So, just huge swing on that, yeah. It, I don't know if you've been following the, the Christmas calendar, Nick, that we did, <laughs> but uh, that was a, a, an idea we talked about with regards to the, to the, the three-point, where you want to be aggressive to hit when your opponent steps up to your three-point, but not when he's on your deuce point. You yeah. don't want to be aggressive and hit because he's getting primed. That's exactly, exactly what we saw here. Oh, oh this, this pick and Sander? pass looks like oh. an overplay, yeah. Don't pick and pass we've, here. Yeah, we have sense. nice structure. We're doing fine. There's no yeah. need to, like... It's too long of a ride home to start playing that in pure, right? We yes. still have to get past that checker. And he, Sander, because of the blot on Mochi's 5 points, Sander gets a shot if, if Mochi is lucky to roll a 6-4. A and I was thinking that maximum contact is, is getting rid of the 8 here. And that's actually a little bit better the first play that he looks at. That's interesting. 
Uh -huh. But we have a hard time finding our own flexibility when we give up the eight and have to play from the eleven and ten. So okay, yeah, it's an interesting play. Yeah, I, I think. Very... playing very fast and trying to conserve clock time in this one now too. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, Sanders probably just counting the race here, and when okay. he realizes he's down set in pips, he he knows that yeah. of course this is not a double. And outboarded and more checkers yeah, back. Yeah. <laughs> Even if he was up seven pips, it would still be a no double. Yeah, a few problems with the position. But... <laughs> This, I don't, I mean, uh, yeah, there's, there's no other play when we're outboarded. We just have to sit on it and hope we get to play a decent race, you know? Yeah. Six out is huge for Mochi. He's happy it to is. not have the blitzing game plan. The deuce is interesting because you're going to need more shots to step all the way. Oh, but eight to six it. looks so natural to me. Why, why would we want to get closer? Uh, just to be sure to get it to safety next time. If he stays we're already six time. away from a point, though, you know? So, that's like, true. we gain... I think that's the reason why we shouldn't do it. Yeah. I think that's the reason. I think you're right. Mm -hmm. and the distribution gain of 8 to 6 is actually not, like, small either. Yeah. I think it's very good for the race, very good for playing home and getting your checkers yes. home, all these yes. things. It's where it wants to go. Put, put your checkers Two. where they belong, right? Yeah. 2-1 can't get to safety now. Uh, maybe there's some shifting that's worth doing, but I would still just be thinking this 5-2 to two as well, yeah. Yeah. How do I want to make more shots that hit? Yeah, I was actually thinking about 6-3, to three. It, because this is a situation where you're fighting for freedom, and usually you don't want blots in your inner board, mm. even in the rare event of a hitting exchange occurring in the upcoming sequence. So yeah. the better play would have actually been 6-3 to three for Mochi, keeping his yeah. front position tight. It looks so much worse for the race, though. Like That, that looks like a yeah. poorly placed checker for a third on the three, and the single on the deuce is okay. That's know? right. It, it is. Yeah. You are sacrificing racing efficiency. Mm-hmm. I think that's uh, why Mochi made his play. I would probably have made Mo Mochi's play as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Sander also maximizing racing efficiency. And the race too close to have any thoughts of a cube yet. Yeah, look at this. Still Nick. struggling to get this checker home. Yeah, amazing. Yeah, it's not gonna. It's not getting to safety. I mean, it's not yeah. the end of the world, but. I think just clearing the ten while we have the opportunity seems fine here, doesn't it? We really need to keep that landing point, or. But that's the connection. Idea. That's the con. Mm. Oh, that, Okay, the wow. problem here Giving is two Giving up the blocks. 8 instead seems... Yeah. I wouldn't find that. It's, it's because understand. of the connection with the blot and mm. the 10-point. That's why you don't want to give up the 10-point. Yeah, but it's harder to clear later, you know? Oh, he That's gets true. off the 9 just in time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. This is an interesting decision, too. I would imagine that I would want to make the pure point, but we're supposed to play 8-2 to two and 7-4 to four for better racing distribution. Okay. Well, I don't think we have any other 6 than 8-2. to two. So it's well, there's seven to one after we play eight to five. You know, would have been our only play. Ah, uh, right. okay. Yeah, yeah, this one is better. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Mochi gets to safety that that guy. Finally, and just three pips ahead in the race, anyone's game. Sander has to decide if he can start afford to bury pips in the board now, or if he just needs to go. This big. seems pretty big. Yeah. Yeah, it's too big. Yes, confirmed by XG. This is too yeah. big because there's a lot of. Where, where you get hit and, and Mochi covers one yeah. of the two blots and then you're just getting dominated. We can see he's pausing to think about it because he's dropped all the way down to like one third chances to win just with this roll. Like it's very bad for the race to have yes. to sit on this. Yeah. It, it is. Yeah. Long crossovers. Mm -hmm. It's going to take time to get his checkers home, Sander. Yeah. It's still not enough where Mar Mochi's so likely to lose his market that he needs to send the cube yet, though. Yeah. No, no, Ten pips will get him closer, but even... Oh, oh wow, look at this. Good play. He good keeps play. keeping contact in ways... Nice. Yeah, I would have been tricked into just leaving from the 10. Very nice Very find. nice play. Yeah, because look at 6-1, six, 6-2, six, 6-3. Six, and even the fives. Now Sandra has to bury checkers. And it's yeah. costing him valuable pips in the race. And if Mochi rolls the 6-1, six, 6-2, six, 6-3, six, like the contact's not necessarily bad for him either. You know, yeah. it can go both ways. Yeah, Sander just hating to have to deteriorate his front position further and thinking again about, is it worth but just he going? To. Yeah. He yep. has to. Yeah, it's too dangerous with a five-point board. He would lose all of his race wow. equity. Great cube. Down one pip, but it's it's deceiving because... Yeah, actually so much wastage. Most, exactly, so much wastage yeah. and very long crossovers for Sander. So when Sander eventually gets home, Mochi's going to have three or four checkers out. Yeah, how much? How many would I punish this? Maybe it's two extra crossovers, two for each extra checker on the ace is maybe another like six total. 
but maybe we fun. punish for the extra on the three, and the six is open too. What about for long crossovers, Nick? Because yeah. just punishing two crossovers doesn't seem right because Mochi's got short crossovers, Sanders got long crossovers. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, that estimate that I just came up with would give like eight wastage already, maybe seven, and that should be enough for a pass in a position like this. But the the contact is unclear, so I think probably I'm over punishing, if anything. For sure, Sander doesn't yeah. make any kinds of effective pip counting methods here. He's just going oh, okay. by feel. He's looking at the pip yeah. count and going by feel. And yeah. his instinct is just scary good. Yeah. Yeah, I think the potential contact is like, could be good for Moche too here. It's not clear that it's only benefiting Sander. Yeah, so that's I think right. that helps right. the cube there. Yeah. Twos, I bet the best he can do is just break it, right? Like, Sander doesn't want contact against a closed board. So yeah, I think this is this seems right. To yes. salvage what race we have, yeah. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. It's not bad. That's another fun element to this matchup, Nick, uh, this stylistic approach for... Uh, take effect, effective pip counting as an example. It's mm -hmm. not something Sander is doing. He's not mm. using any of these formulas or anything. Mm -hmm. so he's counting the pips and then he's making his own mental adjustments. And I like this two around instead of playing into the five to give ourselves a chance of putting a checker on the six for racing distribution. Mm -hmm. um, little tactical stuff going on. I'm not sure what I do with this though. I guess both of the five seems fine, but we could come to the six and the four as well. Misses a little bit there, okay. Yes. This what an interesting. They're playing so sharp that that was actually quite significant for the PR race to miss that, that was 30 mil points of equity. Sandra just went from having three straight perfect games, three perfect straight games to to, to making one small error. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> and now it's one one in small errors. <laughs> but both of them playing uh, outstanding in this match so far. Right, right. It feels like Moji's hanging onto the lead here, but I can't tell. His distribution's gotten pretty bad. It does. So likely to He's fall off here. a roll soon. Yeah, it might. If he rolls bad here, we might even see a cube from Sander. It's five two. Yeah. Does that well, hold off the cube? Yeah, uh, Sander still got five rolls, right? One, two, three, four, five roll. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's, it's that yeah. was a pretty good roll. Five two. Got two chips right. off. Right. Still possible to just not miss on the right home. Yes. Mochi needs to roll high dice here, especially a six is great. He doesn't want to roll. Oh, that's not too good. Four, two, one off, yeah. but he's still right in it. It's not bad he's enough right yet. It. That's yeah. right. So now we're at a one, two, three, four, four roll for Sander. One, mm -hmm. two, three, three and a half roll for Mochi or something like this. Mm -hmm. and Sander's on roll, so it's got to be close. Mm -hmm. And it is 55% for Sander. How would I estimate this? The next miss should be, or often will be, the last one for Mochi, unless he, well, he can roll like a 5 4 right away. And just yeah, that's miss. a very unlucky uh, roll. Is that actually worse than taking one off, though? I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah, it is. It loses a roll immediately. Yeah. 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 And if he does that, then he's on the trail roll, and then Sander actually still has a valuable cube to set. A 6 is huge. Oh, right. that's not good. He, That's not yeah. good. No, very likely to to miss, oh, and then Sanders. This, he's leading in the match, so I think he's gonna have to be really careful. About yeah, but this Mo one. Mochi can't Mochi can't redouble. That's the problem here. He can't redouble. Ah, Sanders doesn't have never any can. rolls where he what? Okay. He can never redouble, right? Because Sanders gonna yeah. take off at least one. Then Mochi, even with Mochi rolls six five, you know, he, he loses wow. his redouble. His Sander, instincts were right there. Yeah. <laughs> Sander missed it. No, no, it was a redouble. This Nick. Yeah, yeah. 22 yeah. millipoint mistake by Sandra. Sure. I mean, obviously very, very small, right? But I think the key is that uh, Mochi could never get... I mean, is it me? Am I wrong here? Can Mochi ever get a redouble? Oh, he tricked the transcriber only <laughs> taking three checkers off of his 6-6. Six, six. Yeah. yeah. Chase. Only double and sixes. can't save it. Okay, can't two points it. for Sander, and we're on to three away, six away. Yeah. Tricky score to play. Yeah. Ah, I think Sander thinks he had a cube there, 
but wasn't sure what to do at the particular score. And so his adjustment instincts were a little bit off. There. New board, Primal, limited edition, only 10 boards made. Order now. We already have one of the Primal boards sold, so there's only nine left, according oh, wow. to my knowledge. Really, really nice board made of Ciprano wood. It's a very mm -hmm. fancy wooden material. Beautiful board. Check it out on the Galaxy web shop. Double fours. Perfect Beautiful response. response for the leader, too, right? To have an advanced anchor. Uh -huh. Mochi going to reclaim some racing lead, but can't do anything about the back checker. So he's under a lot of pressure in this position already. I wonder how you play this. Is it just 13 to... Th yeah, it's just 13 yeah. to 3. Just keep what it simple. What else is there? Yeah, I was thinking about maybe making the ace and the three or something like this. But mm. No, this is just, just keep it simple. Yeah, not enough presence in the outfield to keep bringing checkers home from the midpoint. Oh. <laughs> All right, Mochi's reaching for those back checkers, hoping to do something there. That's a great shot to do that with. Uh, I think it just has to continue too, doesn't it? Why not? Yeah, and uh, Mochi has a, a, ra a race lead actually because of that double five. Is that right. double five? For wow. This That's is a, a tricky game plan five. play. We can hit twice. We can uh -huh. just try to escape to the race and claim. Yes. Of course, I'm... the first play you see is the blitz, right? You can make the four and the ace. Uh, but I think we can do better here. This is a textbook example of when mm -hmm. the cube is in the middle, you come mm -hmm. around the corner. You get for, go yeah. for full freedom, and you just cruise into an efficient cube. Had yeah. the cube been given, now you yeah. have green light to go for the gammon wins. Yeah, right. Sandra makes a small mistake here. So it's just about the claims, and now he's probably going to be like, is he even too good? It's very inefficient when it works is the issue. That's the exactly. It's, you created overkill. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. He's inefficient, and he probably has to cube this. It's probably not too good, right? Because every time your yeah. opponent anchors up, you can't even double. Right. So you got to, and, and if you hit loose and he hits back, you can't double either. So I think sure. Sander has to cube here. It can't be too good. And so if he entered with like the 4-6, oh, what? this is, is a very... A this is so hard ah, to score. The issue score. is three away. Yeah, it's yeah. The score is three away, six away. I, I, I completely forgot about the score. Yeah. <laughs> and this... That's why it's a take. That makes Sanders play even worse, actually, with a double five. Mm -hmm, because mm -hmm. he's leading in the match. He just want to cruise into holding games, racing yeah. positions. Right. Now he, he put himself in a tough spot, and now he has to come find this cube. But if he finds it, he's going to put Mochi in a tough spot. <laughs> yeah. That's the cool thing about this position. I think this is maybe findable. I think um, I talk about these kinds of positions in the book a little bit. I mean, mainly I suggest like at three away, it's, it's very hard to time a cube right in the window here. So I think most likely Sander does not send it. Um, and most humans, right, are just going to yeah. avoid this complication and assume that either I'm not good enough or too good. Yes. Um, but, but then Gammon's, once, right, Gammon, once Mochi Gammon's gets position. a cube in this position, if he has the idea that he can win a decent amount of the time, it should be pretty easy to take. You just uh, ignore the gammons, basically, and good. assume that your recube vig of with 28% wins is going to be enough to do something with this. So yeah, to me, but... that's the easier side of the decision. But we'll I see what he so does with it. Too, I think so too, but it's not completely easy. He is yes. putting Mochi in the spot. He oh, and he spot. drops it. Oh, okay, wow. okay. It wasn't well done, that easy. Sandra. It wasn't yeah. that easy. Yeah. yeah. Okay, in that case, his double five, uh, I have to eat my own words. You know, that was a brilliant <laughs> play by it Sandra Lilov. It yeah. worked. <laughs> Whatever works. Mm -hmm. How could you? Coming soon. Backgammon Masterclass by Super Grandmaster Masayuki Mochisuki and Grandmaster Mark Olson. Subscribe to the Galaxy Newsletter to get information about the book launch. Wow. Nice find with that cube for Sander, and we're off to two away, six away now. A um, little bit easier to deal with the cube at this score now. Um, Sander can't send in gammonish positions like that because he just kills his own value. Yeah. So he'll be looking to send in an endgame kind of position, potentially, but not as long as something like that's at stake. Double Ooh. three, that's interesting. Another one of these, like, quiz problems. We can yeah. make the five, we can we can hit, we can do lots of things, right? Yeah, you got to hit to remove that builder, that slot on the seven point. Ah, he can make the five a little too often himself if we do it that way. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Or just make the seven, you know, or go for yeah. a blitz attack or whatever. This yeah. is a little bit too passive. Mm. Yeah, that's true. I guess the score could kind of point us towards hitting two. I don't think that's what's going on here. I think it's just a better play. Yeah, it's just uh, a better play. It's just a yeah. better play. Mm -hmm. Good play by Mochi. He finds it. Good find. Yeah. 
Mochi seems to have shaken off the, the game or the match one syndrome. Yeah. It seems like he's got a strategy for that too, like making fast plays when he can or like moving a little more quickly, but spending time on those kinds of decisions to make sure that he's finding the right game plan. And it's it's working this time. And look at this, a two-way scoreline. He's got a lead in the race, lead in checkers <laughs> back. That's plenty. <laughs> Ship it, you know? Yeah, ship it. He couldn't yeah. find it. I mean, yeah. most people would, probably wouldn't find this cube, but now that we mm. see the result, it kind of seems obvious, right? Five yeah. away, or sorry, six away, two away. You gotta be super yeah. aggressive. Kill I your think, opponent, gammons. Yeah, Mochi needs to read my book. I think he can, <laughs> I think that one's in there. I feel like I mean, there's all these things that happen when we study the game, right? But that can be, that's like a intermediate to open level kind of cube. I think a lot of people can find that with like a little bit of study of the open and then we get to some some place where we overthink it and don't send it again, you know? <laughs> so yeah, but it does it feels like exactly the kind of thing you want to send, right? It does. I've got more checkers back. There's more gammons here. Like yes. it doesn't And you're killing your opponent's gammons as well. Yeah. Yeah. This is the exact kind of game where you want to send it. Okay, so <laughs> this one is actually bigger and it has more volatility as well because mm -hmm. imagine your double hitters here 3 4 yeah. 3 1 3 5 double 3 yeah. double and this one, must be how mochi's approaching this too five. yeah oh there's I, a lot of good market losing rolls yeah. even just like a random 7 5 2 or 6 1 where I think that's the only trap he can get into in not sending this, though, is going through the sequences and trying to weigh them. When what he needs to see is that there's already three checkers back to one. There's a ton yeah. of gammons in a position like that. Good. It could be more easily. Very right? good. Very good cube by Mochi. He does find it. And so just that like first layer was plenty to find it last time. And of course, trivial take for Sander with no board points. But yeah, well found. Yeah, yeah, and I think take. I think we just go for mobility. Do we really? Oh, we can hit eight to two. Uh -huh. Wow. It's the best okay. play, actually. It's because you've activated the cube. Now you're gammons with yeah. four points. But why does this win more gammons? Because there's 10 in the zone, and we buy two. time to pick up another checker? Okay. Yeah, you put two okay. on the bar. It's a blitzing yeah. move. Actually, this probably prevents our ang our opponent from making the five point a lot more often, too. That's also true. Yeah. So surprisingly, it's, it's going to prevent a high anchor. Yeah. Mochi plays yeah. the double match point move. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It feels very one. natural. And so I think we have to go for the high anchor here, right? Most definitely. And then oh, it's a 5-1. Okay, okay. Oh, oh it was a 4-1. Yeah, that's what I thought I saw. Ah, it's a 4-1. Okay, okay, yeah. <laughs> okay, this can link up and make the 11 as a way to get home. I don't see anything better, but it does create additional contact with the 20 that we're not sure we're going to want very soon. Yeah, but what yeah. else are we going to play? It's a nice, I, don't, I think it's right. a nice roll. Yeah. Good landing spaces for the midpoint checkers. Six two, not so nice. We're running out of mobility. I think the back Keep. checkers need to stay where they are. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. They need to yeah. stay where they are. Maximize Would have preferred to just make a board point, I think, though. Ooh, no safe play here unless we clear the eleven. We can clear the eleven. Maybe that's what we should do. I think it is. Yeah. Just too many shots with all the other variations we have to create, like. One blot with a double shot return, or an extra blot in the outfield. Like it was a good. It's a good argument for why we should make the eleven point on the last roll because now we can play a five one. Ah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, obviously, it's difficult to go over all of the upcoming rolls <laughs> afterwards, right? But yeah, I never do that. But I think Mochi does some of that. Yeah. I expect Sander does too. Yes. Um, Both I of think them very strong in tactics. Just slotting to make another board point is like instinctual, but is it time to make the 23 and lock that up and make sure That's, we have the double anchor to play? The computer That's seems the to think so. I mean, yeah. The, I think it's because of the stack on the six point. All of a sudden, the 5-2 right. back game starts to look very attractive. Yeah, and we don't want to give them some super jokers that would, like a 6-4 yeah. is so much better. Yes. Well, I guess not really. It can make the four point. But yeah, but I, still, I it's still yeah. much better. Because he wants yeah. to unstack and double four, of course. Oh, and so what he's really wrestling with is which point should he make in his board. Yeah. He's never even thinking about the 23 yet. Okay. But he might not get another chance too, right? Sometimes Mochi gets... makes this point and attacks next time and you never get the opportunity. Yes. Um, should he stay back with the bad rear checkers just to get that opportunity? Or should he just would... come up? I would have thought so, but it looks like in the numbers yeah, that it... 
You're losing it's too many gammas by staying oh, back. Oh, okay. We're plus. still okay to do it on plus plus, yeah. So yeah. this is probably more clear at a normal score, but the gammons are pretty relevant that we, yeah. you know, maybe at four-way, two-way, that'd be enough to swing it, something like that, where gammons are a full one price, but they're still pretty normal priced um, at six-away, two-away. Yes, that's right. Mm -hmm. I think they're probably priced a little bit a little bit higher than they are at zero zero, mm -hmm. but uh, it's not nothing crazy yet. It's not like four away two away. Mm -hmm. Easy easy play for Mochi. PR race is super close, huh? One point nine versus two point zero. Mm hmm. Anybody's game. Yeah, and Sander just not having an easy ride here, like. I think this is why it would have been nice to make that 23. That's all solved, right? And then we can play however we want on the yeah. front from there. And now it's a little bit scary to be open back there. Yes. But just giving up the point. midpoint seems very natural. Why, what, what is play B? I'm not sure what I'd be thinking about. Yeah, because you don't want to play checkers in deep. Typically, you want to yeah. clear the midpoint to stay flexible before you start playing checkers in deep. Yeah. And if Sandra just goes by that rule, mm -hmm. he should be able to find the best play here. Is he thinking about it all running from the back? No, it looks like he is focused on his offense. Okay. Yeah, because you can't really run effectively because you can only yeah. run with the 24-point checker. And that's, mm -hmm. I mean, that's not the checker you want to run with. Right. Oh, he's going to make the and, ace. Ooh, uh, these impurities really are costly. It, it seems yeah. nice to just make any board point, but when he's this far behind, he really needs to make them in order to be ready to hit a shot. Yes. It's going to slow him down so much from making any sort of prime to contain a, a checker from Mochi if he should get so lucky. And this looks like a nice time to just switch to an attack. How else yeah. are you going to bring this home? Yes, Mochi's way ahead in the race and he has to leave a shot anyway. May I just mm -hmm. add something, Nick, uh, to the previous position? Sandra's going to lose the midpoint anyway next roll. Mm -hmm. So why not just yeah. clear the roll before and then you didn't have to put in checkers deep? Yeah. Uh, this is the um, wrong idea for Mochi. But it's a difficult play. Yeah, there's a lot of hitters from it still. It's there like it probably gets hit more six, often five, anyway. Six. Well, all five, aces six. as well. Yeah. yeah. That's five. That's sixteen hitters. Mm -hmm. This is just eleven hitters, so it's way safer to double hit. Yeah. Way safer. Sixteen versus so eleven hits. Successfully reduce contact, which I think means we continue with that plan and just make the nine now. This seems pretty simple. Definitely. Yeah. Just Why would you want to stay back here? Yeah, yeah. Bring it home. There we go. Bring it home. Bring it home. Not a lot of gammons anymore with, with Sander entering quickly, but the wind should be pretty locked up. There's a little bit there is a little bit of gammon here because of four mm -hmm. back checkers and that goalkeeper dangling behind how many gammons? What does it say? Seven yeah. percent or something? It's a little so bit we can of make gammon. the deuce here now, I think. But we're not supposed uh, to. Okay, we should keep no. things even around the yeah, outside. Yeah, I yeah, would... exactly. This is ugly. This is not good flexibility. Yeah. Flexibility I like pressuring device. that plot though. I mean we have all these like Two ups that are gonna hit and cover and really threaten a gammon now, and so it's tempting at the score, I think, yeah. to kind of think this way. He we don't actually exactly win more gammons this doing this, though. That's interesting. That's true. That's true. Mochi might be tempted by this match score to make this. Wow! Play. According to Plus Plus, this is the DMP play. This just wins more, <laughs> but, oh, yeah, but he should go for me. distribution to win more gammons. <laughs> what? It's I had it the other way around. <laughs> exactly. Same here. Yeah. Yeah. That's I'm very really strange. I'm surprised. I thought the other play was. Yeah. Very I strange. This would be the double DMP play, and where you. Maybe the bots just the... lost. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, why is that? You bring in more attackers closer to yeah. the. Here, they're better place to attack or something like this. Hmm. I don't even see a look at it here, honestly. Like how no. this could possibly win more gammons. It might be with a gammon race because you get one extra crossover. Mmm, that's an interesting idea. Yeah, and we might just end up like playing really ugly the whole way home because of how bad the distribution is. Yeah, but why I'm surprised that it would win more. But um, yeah. Yeah, I'm su I'm surprised of both. Both that it wins yeah. more uh, to mm -hmm. play the ugly play, and that yeah. it wins more gammons to play this one, which I think is the natural play. Yeah, the only other gammon argument I can make for for this one is that maybe we end up in contact with that blot on the 22 more often. And so maybe some exchange of hits just happens more often here. I don't know. Yeah. And just raises gammons for both players. This is very strange, though. And here we see Mochi in his grind out the PR mode. There's, like, not a big difference between <laughs> these two, right? Yeah, but he doesn't know but, that. Yeah, but he knows he can calculate and figure it out with some certainty in that 
he still tends to pick these up, you know? Back to the best play. Under two minutes on the clock, though. I think that should be enough to get him through, but he can end up in some time pressure if this match goes his way. He's got at least one more game to play, and maybe two or three even, right? Okay, he goes with making the two-point. Very understandable. That's a yeah. tough one to find. I can't even explain. That's like a, a rare backgammon position where I can't explain the best play. <laughs> I really am. I'm not yes. sure. Yeah. This one also surprised me a little bit, I must admit. Yeah. This one's interesting, too. I'm um, quite tempted. So I think we're already seeing the effect of his play is that the back checker should just get moving now as a result. And so maybe it's like... That actually makes a lot of sense for why there's more wins and less gammons, is that he just gives up on the contact, or should. Yeah, uh, it could be. I mean, the, the reason I think why it makes sense yeah. to play 22 for, to 18 for Sander was because of that Dilly Builder on Mochi's four point. Right, that too. Yep, yep. Blot behind too, so he's Blot not so behind, likely to get yeah. a hit outside. Yes. Oh, this is an overplay, though. He can still lose the game if he goes for something like this. Yeah. And there's this one, and then you can also clear the nine point. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is a trap. Like, the hitting play is a trap here. He should yeah. not be hitting. Well, his opponent still has the better board, and we can win a gammon like the safe way later, you know? It's not like this is our last chance to attack. So I don't think the gain's really that high. And it's not so likely that we even win a gammon when we go for it. So some safe play seems called for. I do like the clearing play, too. It looks very nice. So probably Sanders just, again, is he supposed to hang out back there? Yeah, it's close. Very close. That's I mean, tough he, to decide. He, he doesn't really want to lose a gammon, right? So that's an yeah. argument for coming up. But his contact's but, better, uh, you know? It, yeah. That's right. That's right. Yeah. It's difficult to. Or it's better. This one is probably pretty. Contact. It's probably pretty clear to stay at a normal score again here, and then uh, getting kind of close because of the one-way gammons. Um, but I think the gammon price is just the normal 0. 0.5 here. I don't it's, think it's any. If we think about like the it's risk be reward, higher. it's gotta no, be it doesn't. Higher. Zero to no. thirty-two is your your win, and thirty-two to fifty-fifty is your gammon, which is like eighteen. Eighteen. Um, so or maybe like seventeen and thirty-three would be close to fifty-fifty. So like a little bit higher. Yeah. But it's not too much past the fifty percent. That's yeah. usual. Yeah. Not enough to like uh -huh. really account wow. for. Good know? play, Sander. <laughs> I mean, he's winning twenty-five percent instead of eighteen percent now, but he's. And now Mochi like gets to go for. For like a more yeah, yeah for a, a safer attack. Yeah, yeah. Five three 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 are the only hitters. Okay. Pretty good roll from Mochi. Yeah. Sander really needs to come in so he can utilize his contact value. Yep, Mochi Five looking four. to close that three ah. point. Can't do it. Has to leave a lot of blots. How, how do you play this? Five, Ten to one is the best play. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Everything else that clears is deep anyway. Doesn't look pretty, but what else can he do? I I could see stacking up the four point. Like nine to four, eight to four might be what uh -huh. I end up, but that's pretty. That's a blunder. It's so it even. Seems... Ah, we're like odd outside when we do this. Yeah, this must just leave shots so often. Yeah. Uh, this is. Was that how it started? There's this one. No, I think. Yeah, this is a legal play, I think. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I thought the starting position might have been different, but no, 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 he's got yeah. it right. Yeah. But yeah, this, this one looks just quite. A bun it's bunch it's of so shots many shots. Yeah, it's right, so many shots right. immediately. Mm hmm. Oh, is it really? Is... Oh, the way you find ten to one is that it's only like five, three, 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 and five, five. Yes, it's it just like really nice duplication. It's way less numbers. shots. It's way less shots. That's, that's right. That's so hard to see if you're not going through that. But that's the thing that I expect Mochi to find. <laughs> yeah, I'm I would really also say quite he's surprised. the master in yeah. these tactical moves, right? Yeah. I wonder how he didn't come across that. That's that's pretty interesting. Just didn't consider burying, I guess. He, he he's slightly off his his game, it seems. Mochi. Mm. Could be. I mean, could he's be. not playing bad by any means. But <laughs> right. We just used to play, see Mochi play at a superhuman level, right? Yeah, yeah. If Sanders gonna play like a three something in the first match, he should just be crushing, right? That's the. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> should be very happy with that result. <laughs> the PR race is dead even. Yeah, close, anybody's close. game. We have no idea what it'll look like after uh, after the plus plus rollout either. It could yeah. change some. I don't think it's going to change much because our transcriber mm -hmm. here in the team yeah. production is doing a, is Hussein Paknahat, by the way. Oh, cool! Shout out, shout out to Hussein. Uh, he's wow. doing a tremendous job transcribing and giving us XG plus and plus plus analysis yeah, on as many great. moves as possible. 
I just noticed Mochi's down to under 30 seconds on the clock now, too. So presuming he can oh. skate through this, he's got some speed gamma to play afterward, oh, you know? He's under I some pressure. didn't even notice that Mochi was burning so much time bank. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Possible explanation for how he missed the tactics of that, yes. that 5-4 for sure. That is the explanation, I'm sure. Yeah. He had to make a decision. This is so tricky. I would instinctually be making Sanders play too, but I guess the efficiency of the crossover is a little bit better. Certainly no risk of being attacked here, really, right? I, I guess aces makes no. a pretty nice board. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. But still, that you would even get some contact. If there's there's yeah. nothing to be worried of. You you got to yeah. run off the gammon, so you got to come home. Uh, he's going to stay back for the 6-5. Five. 5-1 five, can't hit. Can't leave a shot, of course. And still winning like 10% gammons almost here. That's interesting. Uh, not anymore. That'll just lock up the win for Mochi and... Uh, and the gammon save for Sander, and we'll move on to four-way, two-way, the most exciting score. Yes, that is the most exciting score. I was working for a little bit on all my uh, third roll positions and cube action in those. I thought I might like do something with yeah. that. It's There's interesting. There's a lot to of see. cubes. Yeah. <laughs> that's a lot of cubes in that score from third roll. Yeah. Basically, I went every time all you have the... a pretty good opening sequence, you can double. It's uh. So I went through, if you slot and are missed, you have a cube. Yeah. That's about exactly. like, like all you need. I mean, presuming yeah. your opponent doesn't make a, a point. If it's better um, than that sequence, you, yeah. you know you have a double. Yeah, I think in, if you split and your opponent misses, you often have a cube too. You know? But I think there's some simple rules of thumb we could make for things like that. I think Sand. Join the UBC 2023 Contender Tournament and the Estafter Tournament. Looks like Sander taking a short break there, you were saying? Yeah, he's taking a break, which is, I mean, we, we can't really uh, refuse the players to take a break, but we strongly recommend that they don't take any breaks because it's just a seven-point match and use mm -hmm. the bathroom between the games. But yeah. uh, it's okay. And so uh, we, now we get to that exciting four-away, two-away score where Mochi has to double super aggressively. He lost. Any? Look at this. He missed the slotting play with 2-1. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A cool score thing. It's a tricky one to figure out, but there's really good duplication of offensive point-making roles, too. So, it's funny sure. because I was actually drilling these kinds of positions with, with Sander before he left for Tokyo. Yeah. Whether you make the 5 or the 20 point. So yeah. I'm gonna... This one's I'm clear for so many reasons. Give him hell if he doesn't find the best play here. Yeah. I mean, the, this is fairly common that you would choose to make the 20 when you use the wrong spares and leave the stack of 5 on the 6. Yeah. But then also, you're you're playing at a Gammon save score against Gammon Go, basically exactly. here, presuming exactly. it comes in. Exactly. So you just want the anchor. Like, that's going to trick oh, you into making no, the anchor Sander. more. No, 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 no. We Ooh, drilled the this. First he, wonder he, of the he, match. Even got, he got 14 out of 15 correct in the quiz yeah. I gave him. In the train yeah. when I was training with him, he got 14 out of 15 correct, and now he makes this blunder here. It's such That's a clear 4 3 is a natural play to make the 20 point with, so yeah. you don't strip the 8 point and you're you're leading two away, four away. It feels like that could easily be a PR match decider, too. <sighs> yeah, that's I'm in such a tight race here, yeah. But he's come out with uh, Mochi just kind of a simple three checkers back holding game, not a lot of threats with the cube, so. Probably be some time till he has something here. Sander just with a simple lead and not really risking a lot of gammons. Yeah, this is unclear whether we want to bring another one down or come around and be closer to home, I guess. I don't really want to help my opponent mobilize that third checker on the on the anchor. Yeah, but usually like, it's the right yeah. idea to just bring checkers into your own home board because yeah. the, the upside is bigger every time you get missed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Mochi only down 15 pips in the race. This is a kind of simple game ah. where Sander could find his own match <laughs> leading cube, even. That's right. So what's his doppling point here? Mochi's take point is 18.6%. So right. Sander's got to be close to that before he considers doppling. Right. I think it's like 80% or something like this. And he's Clearly not, there not yet. yet. He might have a money cube. You know, It, it might be, be a money cube, yeah. yeah. It might be a money cube. It probably is, actually, a money cube. Mm -hmm. But not at this score. Right. He's probably going to want to clear the contact before he sends it in a position like this. And to those of you watching that are not that familiar with uh, match equity, we can strongly recommend Nick Blazer's new book. 
And uh, the reason I know that the take point here for Mochi is 18.6% is just because I memorized what the yeah. winning chances are from each of the Crawford scores. Four away, one away Crawford. Mm -hmm. Those feel like the important ones. And I think he's going to lose his market with this roll, most likely. Aha. It depends on the what Mochi rolls here. Mochi want to roll high with the dice now. If Mochi rolls small, I think we're going to mm -hmm. see a cube. Yeah. It should be coming either way. Yeah. It should be a pretty comfortable one to send, you know? It's uh, very I, I, I like eight to three. Uh, okay, eight to five better, but it was close. It was yeah. one minute. I guess these tend to be takes for money as well, though, when you have the the 10 and 8 oh, point, but it's good spares. So good this is probably passable for money. I think it's good enough to send it, but no, I think is, it this... should still be a take for Mochi. It's still a take for It's still a take. It's for early. Money. It's early. Yeah, yeah. Oh, no, sorry. Oh. It's not a take for money. I thought it no. was, but it wasn't. But still a little bit early at the score as a result. Yeah. You yeah, really because... want to be right on that take pass borderline before That's you right. send these leading scores. Yeah. Exactly. You want to be like 1% from the take point, and here yeah. you're 2% from the take point. <laughs> so mm -hmm. you're 1% mm -hmm. short, Sandra. Yeah. It's uh, that's one that Mochi, I mean, if he doesn't know his references perfectly there, like he can maybe struggle with. I mean, of course, I expect him to be pretty comfortable in that, but uh, it gives your opponent a decision. So it's yeah. uh, it's an intriguing one to send anyway, if you're as strong as Sander. Yes. Uh, and, and if you, there's actually an argument for not sending it, if you know it's close, because then you're going to get more cube decisions. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's fair. When you ship it early, you, yeah. you, uh, you're missing out on cube decisions. Maybe he gets more easy checker play decisions. And oh, yeah. Mochi's sitting on the cube to get these decisions too, to make sure he doesn't lose his market. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Sandra. Yeah. Look, Sandra didn't realize hates this when it. he doubled aggressively. Yeah. Sandra hates this. So instead of Sandra getting all the cube decisions, Mochi gets them all. Yeah, this is like huge yeah. for the PR. And it's basically going to lock it up, yeah. I think. You know what? I'm not even sure because it's only a decision if there isn't any equity difference. And I think actually there's no equity difference here between doubling yeah. and not doubling for Mochi. Because there's no market losers, even if he rolls no, double he sixes. No, he just gained by rolling there. I saw it, I think. And I, I think I think it tends to – I don't know why. I, I know what you're talking about. I don't understand how it decides what a no decision it, is, but it seems be, like – There has to be an equity difference. But if there's just one millipoint of equity, decision, equity difference, it counts as a, as a decision. I think it, it potentially can be less than a millipoint or something, but I've always seen it count cube decisions anyway. If it's less than – or if it's bigger than zero. <laughs> so yeah. if it's infinitesimally bigger than zero mm – -hmm. But the, also the equity difference is like you never gain by not sending, you know? And so yeah. it's really, I don't know, it's, it's strange. <laughs> but I think it's counting. It sure looks like it's grinding his PR down. But he's getting checker play decisions. I don't think he's getting no, two decisions. No, watch this. So he rolled. He went from 203 to okay. 202. And then uh -huh. he played his checkers and he went from, nothing. Yeah, okay. 202 to 202. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it is counting it. Okay. Yeah. So there must be an equity difference larger than zero between rolling and not rolling or uh, doubling and not doubling yeah five two yeah we have the better board now we can just play the single checker contact sure if we just need the contact to be able to win the game if we should get so lucky as to get a shot so i like this play and mochi can still double in even Ooh. if he Ooh. But he opened this up. But it's not oh, clear that he'll take advantage of it. Should he just come in and try to bear off, or should yeah. he shift? My first instinct was to shift, but this is a better play. This is clearly mm. a better play. Mm. Hosein is analyzing it's hard for me to see. secondary move. Yeah, because you just eliminate all the gaps, and it makes it so easy to win the game after you play 8-6. to six. Mm. If you, you, if, you have if some you immediate switch, shot levers. Yeah, but if you switch and he rolls a 5... Then you're mm -hmm. in trouble. I mean, you're still favorite, yeah. but the, that now you have three gaps. That's a so problem. You can still roll like a six three or something like this after the switch. Actually, yeah, that's a huge problem. That is depending a huge on problem. how we keep our distribution and things. So there's not like a safe enough way to play it. No, yeah. and okay. uh, there's not a, any other incentive for a hitting play. Like for instance, had the race been closer, then mm -hmm. you would hit to remove the race fa equity yeah. from your opponent. That's so not the maybe, case here because right. Sanders leaving leading thirty five pips with a no hit. Is there maybe we reduce to... our our oh. contact easiest by just letting him play and playing into the six? Yeah. There, there's also this variation where you slide to the seven and then sure. you you pick and pass. Yeah, and it's a little bit better than the other hitting versions, but uh, again, I think has similar 
similar problems like a 6-3 is going to volunteer right away if our opponent stays yeah. on the on the roof and is still a little bit annoying when he rolls a four and he's ticking down to under 40 seconds on the clock now and mochi with 15 left so if mochi can slime this out somehow they're going to have an Good interesting play. game with time bank to play next time Good play, so why is suspended here it could be over yeah. right this yes. could be the biggest decision you have left of the match that's right it was good time management i think for sandra mm -hmm. it was a big decision and there was blunder potential yeah 2-2 two, two is going to solve a lot of problems. That's just... That looks like gin. Yeah. But I think we're going to have a draw here in this match, Nick. It looks mm -hmm. like a 1-1 one, one here. Yeah, I think Mochi's going to uh, have the PR. He, he probably will. But this is still big for Sander because he preserves his lead. Mm -hmm. On this match yeah. for Mochi to catch up. Yeah, we talked about that in the intro that... Uh, if Sander just wins all the matches, that's the easiest path to win yeah. the UBC final, right? So. <laughs> Tough so. to beat if he can do that. Oh, yeah, and a fan? This is a little bit of hope for Mochi. Lots of oh, shot yeah. leaders here now. Oh, yes. Oh, no Ace is chance. not one of them. That's going to fix no everything. Chance. Oh, you don't want to just clear the three points, Sander? Oh, I didn't even think about that. <laughs> yeah, I guess 34 so. seconds. Make a decision. Oh, what was that? They, they forgot what the starting... Uh, it started with uh, Checker from the two on the ace. You had, he had four checkers on the... Oh, this is not what they had. It's not what okay. they had, but it doesn't matter. Just, it doesn't matter at all. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You just... Uh... That's funny, though. They asked the transcriber to fix it. <laughs> they still didn't find it, so we're going to have an illegal play. <laughs> Okay. Did they make an illegal play here? I think they did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They made an illegal play. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, what do they do now, now that they went a road roll past? Uh, yeah. yeah, he can't figure out what the position should have been. No. And uh, and that now the, the trans transcriber couldn't guide them towards the original position, which means they're going to put in an illegal play, which means Sander going to have one decision left uh, less than Mochi. But right. it doesn't. But matter. he avoids a mistake as well, right? So I, it's probably like a positive decision if he gets uh, it. Ah, he avoids. Yeah. Them, but it was very close. It was right, right. Close. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, all in all, it doesn't matter at all. It's the yeah. same. Uh, Sanders got cheated for one decision, but he also got rescued for a millipoint mistake. Yeah, they have to figure out what the rule is here now that they caught it with the 4-2, you know? I'm not sure what they're supposed to do here. Yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I hope Sanders didn't have any money riding on that. <laughs> legal plates in the match. <laughs> he looked a little bit like like that was a big deal. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mochi being a, a fair sportsman here, he's just saying, I'm losing anyway, so it doesn't matter how whatever way you want to play it. We just yeah. put in a legal play. If uh, yeah. Mochi, I think he's at zero percent here, winning chances. But Mochi's going to take the PR point, and Sander's going to take the match win here. There's the handshake. Sander yeah. up 3-1. Yeah. 5-1, I, I would immediately do this. Oh, just uh, oh, make the five aim one. a shot? Yeah, yeah, to try to win gamma. Uh -huh. Oh, he thinks he should have attacked there, but that's actually an overplay, as we saw. Yeah. Interesting. It's funny how that goes, right? When you think your opponent's making mistakes. Oh, I love seeing him kind of construct this position, too. Of course, Mochi just remembers. <laughs> Did I roll 16 already? Oh, yeah, Sander does too. Did I roll 16? <laughs> it's incredible. <laughs> yeah, Sander made a great play with 6 2 to max maximize his winning chances. I like your 6 4, yeah. you know? Uh, yeah. I'm not sure, but even, I'm not even sure. I, it's not likely to win Gamma anyway. No, but if you play 6 4 like this, I'm thinking, should I mm -hmm. leave it 4 5? Yeah. You know? If you keep it here. Mm -hmm. If you make this play, I'm never leaving. Yeah. I, mean, not for the first I like that. That's exactly what we ended up talking about. Is it's more gammons because you should just break contact. What an interesting play. Glad to hear him talk about it. There we have the PR result confirmed. Sander with that 3-1 lead. Mochi has taken over the, the overall PR. Interesting, but it's a dead even PR race so far. Yeah, amazing. So the score is now 3-1 to Sander. This ended up in a draw. 
it was not as complicated and exciting of a match as the first one, Nick, but we still got to see some very good backgammon here. What do you think about the match? Yeah, I think uh, Mochi will be happy to scrape out a PR point in that one anyway, even though he's uh, behind. And Sander may be a little disappointed, but we got to like the, the storyline that I was excited to see. We see Mochi maximizing on decisions and format issues and things like this. And Sander actually making a very sizable mistake, sending like a slightly early cube. If we factor in the format with it too, that cost him a lot of equity in the PR race. And I'm not sure if it was enough to swing it in that match, but certainly we can see if it's ever close, Mochi's going to find the deal breaker on that, right? And I don't think yeah. Sander is, right? So it's putting a little extra pressure on himself. Yeah, Yeah, Sander's not going to take that into account. And I think even right. if you told him, he probably wouldn't, he would probably double anyway, just demonstratively yeah. showing that he doesn't care sure. about this uh, PR I did tell him, Mark. I did in the finals with, with Zdeniak Ziska. I mentioned that he, Zdeniak sat on this auto cube for a while and that it was good for his PR because he was earning decisions. And Sander at the time was just like, oh, that's not like, that's like not back and it's kind of annoying, you know? Um, but it was clear to me at the time, like, okay, this guy is not going to study that part of the game. You yeah. know? And that's just like not yes. a thing that he's going to pick up on. So yeah. yeah, I was ready for it. Yeah. So three one to Sander and uh, Mochi actually, uh, came back in the average PR as well. So now they're dead even mm -hmm. at around 2.8, both of them. Uh, so yeah. it's, I think it's still a completely open match, right? Sander has the upper hand, leading 3-1. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. It's a good start for him still. And, you know, playing a super sharp match other than that opening play that you thought you taught him, <laughs> but he couldn't remember. <laughs> yeah, um, it's classic yeah. dilemma of the golden point. Do you make the 20 <laughs> or do you make the 5 point? Usually with 4-3, you make the 20 point. It's just a natural role to make the 20 point. And especially right. when you're leading 2 away, 4 away. You don't want right. to lose a gammon. Mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah, okay, so we had a good match. Uh, everybody, remember to stay tuned for uh, Grandmaster Michi's video of the match with the grandmaster analysis he's going to pick up one or two positions from the game and uh and really debunk these positions so i'm looking forward to seeing this uh if you haven't already subscribed to the bagaman galaxy youtube channel you definitely should because then you will be notified about these videos then i want to thank our main sponsors of the ubc Backgammon Galaxy, of course, and our partners from Istanbul, FM Gammon. Shout out to the big Istavda annual tournament in April in conjunction with the UBC Contender Tournament. Hope to see you see you all there. It's going to be fantastic with maybe a thousand players or something like crazy like this. And uh, a shout out to the new upcoming book by myself and Super Grandmaster Mochi, Backgammon Masterclass. It's going to be amazing. Uh, we, we, we have so much uh, hype around this book. Uh, so I hope that it can live up to it. And you're all going to love the book. And uh, last but not least, I want to give a big shout out to the Backgammon Galaxy mobile app. If you haven't already divide, uh, downloaded it on your, on your smartphone, go to App Store, Apple or Google Play and download the, the Backgammon Galaxy app. That's yeah, all yeah. for me. Uh, go ahead, Nick. Yeah, I got my book available on Amazon, as you saw in the opening there. Adjusting to match play, it should help you out with a lot of these score decisions and checker play things that we're talking about, and hopefully give you a simple and less mathy approach to that, something more intuitive, the Sander way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I've been doing a lot of work on my uh, YouTube channel lately, so if you're interested in more content, learning about backgammon, interviews with people in the community, come over and check Nick Blazier on YouTube and watch for more videos there. And yeah, I hope to see you all soon there. Good. Good stuff, man. Yeah. Guys, see you all tomorrow for uh, match number three. It's going to be fantastic. Uh, I'm excited. This, this uh, UBC final, it's once <laughs> a year. Uh, everybody is so thrilled. Everybody's waiting. We've gotten so many messages in the last couple of months. <laughs> when is the UBC final? So it's finally here. So make sure you tune in and like the videos. Put your comments down below and subscribe to the Bagaman Galaxy YouTube yep. channel. Backgammon yes. Christmas every year. Yeah, it's a <laughs> right. wonderful time of year. <laughs> <laughs> All right. See you guys. Bye, everybody. Are you ready to roll the dice? Now, we have the UBC Master Analysis by Michito Kageyama. I picked up one position from today's match. The score is 5-3 for Black, and the cube is in the middle. That means Black is 2 away, White is 4 away and black rolled 4-3. How do you play this dice? Obviously, black had two good options. One is making the 5 point. 
Another is making the 20 point. Which do you prefer? If this is money game, I would make the 20 point because this anchor gives pressure on this blot. I already checked in money game and found that the difference is small, only 15. So we can take either way in money game. It's not a big deal. However, at this score, that makes huge difference. You might think that black wants to win gammon to win the match because black is two away. It seems correct. But how about the viewpoint from white? White is four away. So white thinks, let's turn the cube into two. And then win gammon. Then white will win the match immediately. That's why white will eager to turn the cube. In that case, black's gammon becomes no value. So black's priority is not winning gammon. Avoid gammon is black's priority. That's why making the 20 point is superior. And at this score, the difference is not small. It's 100. Gigantic. So make your priorities clear. That's an important idea. Do you like it? Did you get it? Okay, see you tomorrow, guys. Are you ready to roll the dice? Now, I want to introduce you our third book, Bug Checker Strategy, written by Roland Herrera and Michihito Kageyama. It describes everything about bug checker. We categorize bug checker formation into five groups. We should apply different concepts in each stage. We also put two unique ideas, F13 and glued bug checker. I believe this book will boost your backyama knowledge. My philosophy is the more you understand backyamon, the more you enjoy backyamon. Be happy with backyamon. <laughs>